Okay, this is um, chapter three, day two, <clears throat> bivariate data. We're gonna go through 13 super common questions on the AP stats test that relate to bivariate data. And they're listed here and at the very end, I'll have a prompt and we'll go through it, okay? So the first question they may ask is what does R mean in context of the problem and what's its name? R is called the correlation coefficient. Why it's not called C, I think C is already taken in AX squared plus BX plus C. So they use R for whatever reason, okay? And there's many ways to write this, but my recommendation to you is that you use the qualifiers strong, mild, or weak. Strong, mild, or weak, okay? Um, and then positive or negative, and then the word linear, okay, is always in there, okay? So obviously, if the dots are like this, you know, that's a negative association. We did all that yesterday, the previous day. So you kind of have a sense of it. Now you can use other words, mostly strong, whatever, but typically strong is 0.8 or above or negative 0.8 and below. 0.6 to 0.8 is mild. And then between 0.6 and negative 0.6 is usually weak. That's kind of what I tell people to kind of memorize, all right? Number two, what does R squared mean? R squared is the same formula that you get R with. It's the same one, okay? What's its name? Okay, it's, it's a percentage. So it's the percent of the variability of Y due to X. You kind of have to memorize that. So if R squared is 64, it's 64% 64 of the variability in Y is due to X. It doesn't mean cause effect. It means the variability is affected. And it's called the coefficient of determination. Okay. Um, they, they also have pretty common questions where they ask you to just write the equation of the least squares line and define all the variables. That's really, really common. Okay. And in that case, it's uh, y hat equals a plus bx. And usually in the, the mini tab printout, you'll see it. And we'll go over that in, in, later, about, in later lessons. Four and five are real simple. They're plug-in problems. Sometimes they'll ask you to produce the y or the y hat by knowing what x is. And sometimes it's the reverse to get, to get uh, place the value in y and produce an x, okay? Slope. Slope, I like the sentence frame for every. So I always start with for every, the opinion. So for, for um, there we go. So for every, you know, unit of X, so for every mile you walk, the amount of weight you lose is predicted to increase by five pounds or something like that. That's just a made up problem. Start for every, for every, some amount of X, something's going to happen and why. And we're going to practice all this in just a minute. Okay. Number seven this is on the, for, the green formula sheets in the back of the room that you use on AP test day, okay? So there, it's on there, okay? So uh, R is S sub Y over S sub X, okay? Um, in any event, um, where R is the correlation coefficient and S sub Y and S sub X are the standard deviations of the X's and Y's. It's pretty simple, it's pretty cool. This is a hybrid of, of uh, change in Y over change in X being slope. And remember, B is slope in statistics, not M, okay? And R is the correlation coefficient, okay? Resistant and non-resistant, what do those mean? Okay, resistant and non-resistant, what do those mean? Resistant is outliers will not greatly affect the value. And non-resistant is outliers will greatly affect the value. Okay. Uh, is the line a good fit for the data? Justify your answer. Um, you're going to justify it using a residual plot. Now, what is a good residual plot? A residual plot that is randomly scattered, like I'm doing here, 
So it's evenly distributed along, and it's real close to the X and Y, really close to that line right there. These are the residuals, half positive, half, half negative, okay? That will, um, that will um, be the best thing. And also if you have a high R squared, that's good too, okay? The meaning of least squares, I've seen this a few times, the least squares line, why it's the best fit is it minimizes the sum of the squared residuals or residuals squared. It minimizes that, okay? So take all those residuals, positive and negative that missed the line, square them all, and this line minimizes it. Number 11, what does an alloy produce in the problem? It artificially reduces the value of R, okay? So we're gonna practice this, obviously. So let's look at this sum, okay? Let me slide down here. Uh, sorry, 12 and 13. Well, uh, what does an influential point do? An influential point artificially inflates the value of R. Let me show you an influential point. You might want to write this down. Let's say you got data, first quadrant here, you got data like this. And you got a point way out here, but it's on the line. It's on the line, but it's way out there. That's going to make R look a lot more powerful than it really is because of one point way out there. Because you remember, R is is um, non-resistant. It'll move a lot with outliers. And then if you see an S thing on the mini tab printout, you see a print that we'll show you these. What does S mean? It has the name root square mean error, but it's the standard deviation of the residuals. And what that means is it's how far off your, your predicted response is. So your prediction is typically off by a certain amount. Yeah, your prediction for weight loss is typically off by 2.1 pounds. And the smaller that number is, the better, the more it fits the line. Okay? All right, here's the next part. Um, the concept of causation and identify potential lurking extraneous variables. Okay? So we got uh, causation. Um, causation can only be established by a well-designed experiment. That's it. It can't be gotten by something like a observational study, okay? Lurking extraneous variables, some other hidden unknown factor variable that can influence the correlation, okay? Um, so we'll design experiment. Um, there's a reason things are correlated. There's a reason. One is cause effect. Another one is something called common response. There's just another big variable moving them together. For example, SAT scores, and uh, square footage of your home are correlated. The bigger your house, the higher the SAT score. Well, the big factor in that is money. Money's driving them both. Wealthy people have a tendency to have higher SAT scores, okay? And sometimes it's called a confounding response when you can think of a ton of things that are affecting this, a ton of them, okay? That are, but, so they're not, they're just hopelessly mixed up in all these things. I have little drawings here. I don't know if those help or not, okay? Hold on just one second. Okay, so let's go through some of these questions down here. So they're kind of cool. I got six of them. All right, a researcher has noticed a strong correlation between the following variables and thus has concluded with the statements. Um, does this mean the explanatory variable caused it or not? What might explain a strong correlation? I have some ideas. These are, these are fun. It's fun in class if we're talking about it, but all right, income explanatory variable life expectancy. So you can imagine this on an axis, the more you, money you make, the higher your life expectancy. This is not, this is correlation, it's not causation. And the reason is the potential lurking variables is remember money does buy better healthcare, uh, better educated and they understand health better, all that kind of stuff. Okay, 2B, uh, boys hair length, and lower GPA. Growing out your hair makes your makes your GPA drop for boys. No, that's not that's not causation. That's correlation. Okay, potential looking variable. I don't know. You can't see the board. You don't care. I mean, there's all kinds of variables there. It may just be random. I mean, it's it's nothing there. Okay. C. Explanatory variables. Moonlight response is night crimes. It, by the way, that is true. When moonlight when there's moonlight, there's more crimes. 
Okay. And the statement wouldn't let you feel crazier. No, it's cause it's just not, it's correlation, not causation. Potential lurking variables. There's better vision for criminals at night. That's, that's actually what it is. So they say, okay. House size and SAT scores. I mentioned this before. Living in a larger house will increase your SAT score. No, that is not that's not causation. That's correlation, right? The wealthier they get, more tutoring. You guys know that. And then uh, explanatory variable: ice cream sales and drownings. My favorite one. It's true. As ice cream sales go up, drownings go up. Well, that's 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 correlation. It's because heat. When it's hotter out, more people are eating ice cream. And more people are swimming in the ocean or whatever. Are in pools. Then F, uh, brushing teeth and the response, lack of alligators. Brushing your teeth will keep alligators from attacking you. Um, that is not, that's, uh, that's correlation, not causation. Oh, you know, we don't live in alligator territory here, but um, so what's funny is like, they say that maybe there's less teeth brushing in the bayou in Mississippi or something like that. And they have alligators there. So that, that's what the correlation is. I don't know. I'm just making it up. Okay. Last activity. This is cool. So GPA and study time. All right. There is a little bit of a, a correlation here, right? A little bit of a link. GPA and study time. And I just have fictitious names. They don't mean anything. Okay. And then Y hat equals 0. 0.437. Here are the numbers right here. Here's R, et cetera. All right, the strength looks strong. It's above 0.8. The direction is positive. See, so it's going positive. And this course is linear. All right, now we're going to go through these 13 questions and see what we can do, okay? 13 questions, as best as we can. All right, so the first one, I'll go back up and I'll slide back and forth now. Number one, what does R mean in context? What's its name? Okay. So R is right here. You gotta write this down now. Probably maybe on the back of your notes, maybe write it down, maybe something like that. Okay, R is 0 0.808. Okay, there is a strong, positive, linear association between uh, hours of study per night and GPA. That's it, that's what that means, okay? The second question, hope you wrote that down. Second question. What does R squared mean in context of the problem? What's, what is its name? What does R squared mean? What's its name? Okay. Um, R squared is the percent of variability in Y due to X. We have to figure out what R squared is. So I am going to square uh, R here. I'm just going to do 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 squared is... Um, 0.64. Okay, I'm just going to do 0.8 squared. All right. So 64% of the variability in GPA is due to how many hours you study per night. 64% of the variability in GPA is due to how many hours you study per night. That's kind of cool. Okay, and that makes about looks that, that makes sense. It's not all about the hours you study. It's about how smart you are how easy it is, there's all kinds of factors, but 64% of it is due to how many hours you study, okay? All right, next one, number three. What is the equation that defines the line there? No problem, I have it right here. It's y hat equals 0.437x plus 1.747. You'd have to say y hat equals predicted GPA, and X is hours of nutty study per night. You want that written down too, okay? So there's that one. Um, <clears throat> number four, place a value in X and produce a Y. That's easy, I won't even really do it. But if they ask you something like, um, John studies four hours a night, what's his predicted GPA? You're gonna put a four in for X, okay? Then for number five, if they say, Jimmy wants a GPA of 3.8, how many hours should he study? Put 3.8 in for Y hat and go backwards, all right? Um, number five, uh, six, what does slope mean in context? No problem, so slope, number six, slope. The slope is 0.437, so what this means is for every hour you study, your GPA is predicted to rise 0.437 GPA points. 
say it again. For every hour you study, your GPA is predicted to rise 0.437 GPA points. Okay. Um, number seven, that formula, we won't do that here. We'll do it later. Resistant and non-resistant. I don't, we, we, that doesn't really apply to this. Is a line a good fit for the data? Well, we don't have the residual plot, although you could draw it real quick. The residual plot is just the plot sideways, and then you put the dots on there. See, there's a dot for that. This one goes here. This one goes here, 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 here. See with that? I'm just kind of, I'm just manipulating the data a little bit. Okay. And um, in any event, um, that's the residual plot. Is it randomly scattered? Sure, it's randomly scattered. And R is relatively high, so that's a good thing, okay? We'll do more on residual plots later. You'll see that stuff. You'll see when I do review. Okay. Um, an outlier, let's see here. No, 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 there we go. What is the meaning of least squared? Gen generic question. But it's the it's the line that minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. That's another. One. I wrote it a little differently here. Some of the residual squared or squared residuals. Okay. Remember an outlier. There is not an outlier here. We don't have an outlier. But if you had an outlier, an outlier would be like way down here. An outlier would change the R value dramatically, and would also change the slope dramatically. An influential point would be one that's way out here, but on the line. And it would it would not change the slope, but would change R squared, pumping it higher, making it look a little more inflated, okay? Whoops. Okay, hit the wrong button there. Okay. Uh, last questions, the S and the mini temper. I don't have an S value on this, but I'm going to make it up. Let's say the S, what, how far is the typical prediction off by on this? Uh, it's pretty close. I'm going to say S equals 0.7. I'm just making it up 0.7. What that means is the typical prediction for GPA using this line is off by 0.7 grade points, which is kind of high. Right. I mean, it's all relative. OK, so that is day two of um, chapter three's notes. OK, hope that helps you at least get started.